Vous voulez voyager Achetez vos billets d'avion à l'agent de voyage Tempo Afrique Travel. Avec l'agent de voyage Tempo Afrique Travel, pas de problème de connexion, pas de problème de transfert de vol. Avec l'agent de voyage Tempo Afrique Travel, c'est le voyage en toute tranquillité, en toute beauté, de votre maison jusqu'à votre destination. Votre satisfaction est notre plaisir. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. This is Tempo Africa TV with multiple and diverse programs for all you need, all of you around the globe. Please tune in and immerse yourselves in whatever you need to know about the continent we know best. I'm Prof. Desiree Balubi, linguist and communication specialist at Norfolk State University in Virginia, USA. Welcome to our weekly show, What's Up Africa, Kefel Afrique. Our guest today is Dr. Ikechi Agbuga, a native of Nigeria, currently in Birmingham, not Alabama, but the United Kingdom. He's a university professor with expertise in multiple areas, but we're focusing tonight on his expertise in agricultural economics and agricultural marketing. He's also an agribusiness activist and researcher. The topic we're about to discuss is sustainable agriculture and development in Africa. Hopefully by the end of this interview, our viewers will know or will better understand what sustainable agriculture is, what it entails, and how it can impact development positively in Africa. Welcome to the show, Dr. Aguba. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Balubi. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for accepting our invitation. Our first question to you, uh, Dr. Aguba. We hear this all the time, sustainable agriculture, sustainable everything. What is sustainable agriculture, Dr. Aguba? Thank you for the question and um, also the opportunity. Uh, sustainable agriculture is the same thing as sustainable farming. Um, first of all, can we look at the whole idea of sustainability? What is sustainability? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, because um, most persons have um, have actually... I've uh, been talking about like, you know, sustainability, uh, su sustainable development goals, SDGs and all of that. And um, they have failed to um, uh, focus and um, hinge on agriculture because uh, sustainability in farming is quite important. Well, can I say that sustainable farming mm. has to do with um, a system of uh, cultivation of crops, rearing of livestock or, or rearing of farm animals, and also um, managing of forests and uh, um, cultivating of fishery and aquatic um, environment in a way that um, uh, the, uh, the produce from the farm, the produce from agriculture will be over time, you know, um, available over time. So, um, so every practice, every um, activity, which uh, is you know like friendly to uh, to cultivation, like even um, it you know it touches areas on building an effective ecosystem. Mm. Yeah, because uh, of course you know to cultivate you need to have land. 
Mm. And you need to have soil. Right. And also, yeah, and uh, the crops, um, the uh, the livestock, depending on the aspect of agriculture. You know, the agriculture sector is quite broad. Yeah, yeah. the agriculture sector is uh, majorly comprised of crops, livestock, forestry, and fisheries subsector. And these sectors have their own percentage contribution to the GDP of any nation. Mm. And um, aside that, um, I can also talk about sustainability in you know in line with um, having a, a system like sustainability you know tells us about a system an efficient ecosystem Bi biodiversity comes in as well mm. and every every um, activity which is unfriendly to farming must be uh, must be uh, you know must be removed mm. um, to you know its barest minimum um yeah so that's just it so uh let me just uh, also talk about um you know like uh to talk about um sustainability with respect to long you know long term long term and not just a short term thing you know long term initiative um, with respect to, like, there are many initiatives which are are being practiced now, which, you know, talks about sustainability, uh, especially, um, uh, you know, um, how can I talk? How can I talk about food? Uh, you know, uh, sustainable agriculture without mentioning food security, because of course, food security is a concept which um, you know, is broken down to yeah. uh, majorly four pillars, okay. and then the the and and then the fourth pillar tells us that uh, sustainability is very important. So uh, it's you know it's a long term uh, practice, very which uh, you know practices with respect to crop rotation, increased use of uh, perennial species, and the integration of livestock in pasture and also range-based systems. So okay. like I had mentioned that, um, you know, it's something that um, uh, also technology has come in to to drive uh, sustainability as it were. Very good. Very good. Thank you. I know, uh, uh, Dr. Aguba, this is something you you do on a daily basis. Even when you're sleeping, you're thinking about how can we do this better? How can this, you know, uh, and you have so many questions and as a researcher, starting with your questions, you are investigating and providing answers. And thank you for doing all of that. You are, you teach this at the university level and I know you're part and parcel of the faculty of the uh, Indian Ocean Sciences at the University of uh, uh, the State of the African Diaspora. But how do you break this down when we're talking about sustainability of agriculture or farming? How do you break this down in simple terms, in uh, you know, lay the layperson's terms, so that our farmers, most of whom are have never been to school, they've never taken any, uh, you know, attended any lecture. Uh, I, I, my understanding is that is about is the how to and how not to, and yet. Our people have been doing this for ages. How do you break it down? And uh, you mentioned technology, et cetera, et cetera. And, but they've been doing this uh, uh, manually. Uh, please break this down. And then uh, combine it with uh, my uh, second question, which is about economics. How do we define agricultural economics? Okay. To, for a farmer who is in, uh, in you know, in the rural areas in Ifani or in, uh, uh, let's say, Buake or everywhere uh, on the continent, okay, producing cocoa, producing coffee, so on and so forth. So go ahead, uh, Dr. Aguba. Everybody wants to understand today. They want to hear it from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Yeah, thank you very much, Professor Balubi, for uh, making it very, um, to look, you know, painting the question very nicely. Uh, well, like I had mentioned uh, about sustainability, the sustainability 
It's more like having a system like most people um, who are from Africa, they always want to migrate to the developed countries because they look at their system and they say that they have a very nice system. And sadly, uh, they, we like for me, I'm you know I'm a Pan Africanist, and they, like I'm a full-blooded African. I grew up um, I grew up in a, you know in a university environment in uh, you know in Africa. And I trained, I earned my PhD, I did my postdoc, everything in Africa. So I can tell you that, that, that you know, that sustainability has to do with system. And now we are talking about agriculture. And then um, sustainability is, is all about equity among and between generations. Mm. We are talking of generations of people who in the space of agriculture, especially smallholder farmers, we know that Africa is comprised majorly of smallholder farmers, and smallholder farmers are the ones who are driving transformation in the sector. They are the ones ensuring that there is food. They are the ones ensuring that there is, um, you know, uh, raw materials for industry, mm. which are all aspects of, um, you know, the contributions of the agricultural sector to um, to the you know, to the growth of an economy. Now it's also the same agriculture sector that has, over time, largely um, you know, uh, uh, created jobs. So it has potential for job creation. Right. Yeah, and not just what our you know the youth of Africa have always looked at it from you know a wrong perception. So there's a wrong perception. There's a perception problem with respect to agriculture. So, but we are talking about sustainability, yeah. and we have. Diverse aspects of agriculture. Can, can I talk about organic agriculture? Because organic agriculture is what we can actually, uh, you know, like it's what uh, uh, persons, you know, there is high demand for organic uh, products, organic um, 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 uh, produce from agriculture. Now, um, organic agriculture, which is an aspect of agriculture that is highly sustainable. Why am I talking about that now? Because it contributes to the social well-being by reducing the losses of arable soil, mm. water contamination, and the biodiversity erosion as well, and also greenhouse gas emissions, and uh, food losses, and pesticide poisoning. Right. And of course, we have seen that this uh, that Africa is so blessed with um, diverse, um, agri, you know, agro resources, mm. you know, from every aspect. Of course, we know that the agriculture sector is a primary sector. Mm. It's not just a primary sector, it's a traditional sector. And it's a real sector of which every other um, aspect of um, every other sector depends on the agriculture sector to run. So, they are, so it's really something that um, has to be corrected. There has to be, like I was um, telling them the other day, that I call it brain re-engineering. That mm. is my own concept about um, changing the face of agriculture because agriculture is a sector that can drive sustainability. And okay, now talking about um, how um, uh, the you know we we've been having lots of issues in Africa with respect to environment. We are actually losing out in in the environment, and now we are talking about economics. You mentioned economics now, yeah, in, yeah, and now economics of agriculture is all about how do we partition the, uh, the you know the 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 profits mm. the uh, like what you put in and what you get in as well as someone who is coming in to invest in agriculture. Now many farmers have committed their resources. They have, you know, spent a lot of money to, to you know, to acquire land, you know, lands, to acquire um, um, seeds, inputs, and all of that. Agro, whatever um, inputs, that they are using, and after after a while, they are not having a commensurate return or commensurate margin of what they had committed their resources to. Of course, there's a budget 
the budget that they have drawn be because you know they are you know we have like very um, about 30 30 percent large-scale farmers in the whole of africa that tells us that majorly smallholder farmers are the ones in africa and now we are talking about how to earn a living how to drive livelihoods yeah. of nations and of course we need to understand that africa is broken down majorly into two major parts northern africa which is only five five countries of northern africa and we have 54 countries of uh, um, 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 sub-saharan africa so sub-saharan africa is where the large population is you know from now can i say that libya egypt morocco tunisia and all and um, and and algeria mm. are the ones in the northern african country the the rest the ECOWAS region, the Eastern African region, this you know the SADC, which is the Southern African Development Community countries, and then um, the joining of the uh, okay the Central Africa as well. Right. And what of the yeah the combination of the. Uh, So, uh, like in South Africa, where where I lived before, and uh, you know, I know in that region. So, we need to understand these dimensions. We need to understand all of this when we are. depend on rain job. So irrigation is not, you know, um, um, irrigation is, um, you know, of course it's cost, you know, you know, it's cost intensive for them. So and what about tractorization? You know, for tractors, having tractors to cultivate the lands, that is also a challenge because most, um, uh, you know, like the, there is high price of tractors and they are all in the fixed cost with land and some of these equipment that can stand for a while. But what of the variable costs? So we are talking about economics of agriculture. So we need to actually extrapolate some of these items properly and now see how to um, 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 cut down costs and then maximize revenue, maximize the margins because we need to also understand the food supply chain. We need to understand the channel of distribution from the producer, that is the farmer, down to the middle. And we, have, and, and we know that crops, the crop subsector, that there are more than even the crops that are grown. Well, that's also a very good thing for Africa. So Africa is a, you know, a continent that is quite vested, quite uh, uh, blessed. We are so blessed with diverse agricultural. Um, you cannot really, can I say this, please? Can I say yeah. this? That, yes. That, yeah. um, um, we cannot, we cannot really perform we cannot really fathom the extent of agro resources that we have, the potentials that Africa has in the aspect. Actually, every crop that grows in Africa has the potential to combat malnutrition. Very it has, Very you know, yeah, because we have also most of the crops. Why haven't we done where we are talking about economics of agriculture? Why is it that we are not improving on value addition? Very we good. are not doing much in processing. And that is where the chunk of the revenue comes in. Very good. That is where we can develop products. 
Dr. Aguba, Dr. Aguba, just a minute. I'm uh, sorry to jump in here and talk to our viewers and uh, viewers all over the world and all over the continent and beyond even in the diaspora. Those of you who are actually investing into uh, farming projects, okay, animal husbandry projects or anything related to agriculture, as you know, our economies, uh, all those countries, economies in Africa are based on agriculture. So this is the man, this is the person to ask uh, questions so that you get a hint of what is going on. And uh, Dr. Abuba, coming back to you, based on what you're saying, it's, uh, this thing is, uh, it, it depends on nature, depends on uh, what we're talking about, you know, we've been talking about climate change or the environment, etc. We're also talking about human behavior, human activity, and all those things impact agriculture, don't they? So oh, I'm, I'm just, this is taking me to uh, uh, this question about policies and politics. Shouldn't there be clear cut policies and politics about all of this so that we know the how to, how not to, what we should, what we shouldn't, and how everything we're doing actually uh, can positively impact not just our lives, but development in general, development as a huge term. Dr. Aguba. Wow, such an interesting question. Thank you very much, Professor Balubi. Um, um, can I also tell you that um, a lot is being done in that. In fact, I co-founded an initiative with some persons across Africa and um, and uh, it's actually called uh, Global Agricultural Policies and Politics from mm. an African Perspective. Yeah. And um, we started it last year. Uh, it's uh, an initiative that came up out of our agri-food networks. And then Culture sector. We need to understand that, um, uh, well, most of the sectors, like I had pointed out, that they have their contribution to the GDP, and GDP is a proxy for measuring economic growth. And of course, economic growth, any economic growth that does not trickle down to development uh, will not uh, be sustainable in that dimension because when you have when you know like if you ask me now economic growth and development which one are they the same they are not really the same sometimes they can be the same at some point but they are not the same because um, of course uh, economic growth has to do with quantity and the quantity of resources quantity of goods and service and all of that you know uh quantity of you know like okay the gdp when you look at the gdp you can say, okay, this economy has grown. But we are not now talking of GDP. We are talking of the quality of life. So yes. every policy will focus on sustainability. That is improving the quality of the lives of people mm. through the agriculture sector. Yes. has to be encouraged. And for me, I can tell you that the government of Africa, we are still playing except for some countries like Rwanda, Ghana, Uganda. Mm -hmm. We can't pick them. I want to reckon that South Africa has done well as well, in, even though in the SADC. Mm -hmm. can I, yeah, they are doing well. I know Botswana is also trying, even though their government is quite uh, strong, like, you know, um, they produce, the, you know, they are blessed with diamonds and all of that. And so, but uh, you know, before they are not like flexible like many of the African countries. Kenya is also trying. Yeah, Nigeria is trying. Yeah, some countries are trying in Africa, but uh, we, you know, the government has neglected agriculture mm. so much, and they are busy paying lip service. We are not coming. Okay, now that we are in the era of technology. And we are talking about policy. So every policy that will encourage 
smallholder farmers that will encourage farmers that will bring about creating more avenues for them to acquire land and not just to acquire okay we know that for, for for example in south africa we know that the farmers during the apartheid regime they were dispossessed of the lands during you know of course this is not new that you know uh, even now when uh, you know policies on land reform policy and all of that so you know we will have restitution land restitution mm -hmm. land redistribution and you know all those uh, reform policies so that the smallholder farmers will be able to navigate their way and produce more, earn a living, and keep producing more. We know that there is disparity b between planting mushroom. Yeah. You know why I'm very passionate about this? You know the pharmaceutical industry. The pharmaceutical industry depends solely on agriculture. And the rural area, every intervention Every intervention that will help to emancipate the rural areas will directly contribute to agricultural development. Very good. And in and if in in a, if over time it's the system, this if it is more sustainable, then that is when we can start re recording. Uh, economic de development because there are proxies for measuring economic development like food security, employment yeah. rates, um, 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 healthcare delivery, yeah. infrastructure, among others. Yeah. So very, very, very good. With uh, we're running out of time, believe it or not, it's almost time to call it a day. And I'm, I, I'm going to ask you the final question, and that will be your uh, your last word on this. And you, could you please combine issues? I'm glad you mentioned cash crop. Uh, I, I'm glad you mentioned uh, rural infrastructure. I'm glad you're touching on. Uh, ways to educate people uh, and uh, taking our lectures from the our universities to the to the farms to to the rural areas to see uh, what our people the real people doing the farming what is it that they're doing and uh, your last word please uh, tell us something about how do we uh, actually avoid the clash between cash crops and healthy food production and industry and at the same time uh, balance agriculture and animal hu husbandry because people rearing cattle you know it, this produces clashes you know but you know the uh you see what i'm saying so but uh the animals and the poultry farms and then uh, the producer of uh, cocoa or, or, or mangoes or fruit or vegetable they should be able to cooperate right so uh, tell us about those things and uh, maybe uh, a, a shout out to uh, pre uh, former president uh, uh, Obasanjo. You see, I, I just admire that man, uh, his idea, his initiative, and uh, the Songhai project and the uh, Farmers Home Initiative in Benin. And that will be your last word, Dr. Agbuba. We'll bring you back because you have a wealth of knowledge that you need to share. Go, go for Thank it, Dr. Agbuba. Thank you very much, Professor Balubi, and I'm sorry for, for um, you know, uh, maybe you know I, I overshoot my, you know, but this is my passion. Yeah. You know, my like I'm always invited. Now I'm a regular speaker in most of the events, and even where I work now, they have, um, they have, you know, identified me as someone who is actually very, very passionate. Like I am. You know, you know, driven by this right from my childhood days. Right. So it's is um, uh, you mentioned cash crops. Um, cash crop. There, most times people think that cash crop is a big word that um, that um, typifies um, you know, like special type of thing. Cash crop is just an agricultural crop that is grown for sale. Yeah sale to return a profit yeah you know called you know the reason why it's called cash crop is because it's you know it's of course wealth foreign exchange earnings and you know brings in a lot of money of course those crops can be exported and brought you know like it's high demand like cocoa cocoa right. of africa yeah 
we sell our, our cocos a lot. But I'm not happy with that because we need to start creating our factories now. We need to start building up our Only 30 more. seconds left. I'm sorry. We have only 30 seconds left. So go ahead. Oh, okay, okay, okay. 30 yeah. seconds. Okay, let me just push, push yeah. it. No, okay. Now, the difference between food and industrial crop, because food crops align with healthy crops. You yeah. know, you mentioned... Cash crops can also be called industrial crops because they are used for industry specifically. So um, can I say that can I say that those cash crops they they are um, they have the instrumentality uh, the instrument is the average agroclimatic sustainability from the um, some of those um, you know international agencies which across and most of the important African cash crops has always been, like I mentioned, cocoa, coffee, cotton, granuts, and oil palm in the homeland of ethnic groups. So, and, you know, I didn't even mention about Africa's, you know, having multi-ethnic, multilingual, multiracial, multi, everything is multi. So yes. now Africa has long been rich in these natural resources, consistently providing other nations with opportunities to obtain uh, you know, it's plentiful supply of some of these products. And um, genetically modified, you know, aspect also helps farmers to combat the continent's climate, making their businesses to be more sustainable. So, and you mentioned also about Songhai Farm. And I wanted to say that Songhai Farm is an initiative which, you know, explains your in your previous question on rural um, aspect, you know, Songhai Farm has, you know, lasted for many centuries now. And um, it's, you know, oh, you know, right, right now it's undergoing a lot of, ev you know, evolving with respect to meet, meet, meeting up with the current um, uh, technology aspects that is tr trying to transform the agriculture sector. Now, how can we improve Africa's agriculture? I will stop by saying, because I mean, that is what actually we should be looking at. We should be very passionate about how can we improve Africa's agriculture sector? Because the, since the agriculture sector is contributing to economic growth and, de and development, the first point I want to say is the aspect of developing high yield crops. And when I was a diaspora expert at the Food Crop Production Technology Transfer Station, in one of the stations in my country, I was asked this question on how we can uh, improve seeds. So I was telling them that we have to bring in some of those um, um, institutions like National Seed Council, trying to uh, collaborate with some of, because it's also an intervention that will uh, enhance food security. So increase research into plant breeding, which takes into account the unique soil types of Africa is a major requirement. A dollar invested in such research by the, uh, you know, CGIAR consortium of agricultural research centers is estimated to yield about $6 it benefits. So secondly, boosting irrigation, because many farmers of Africa, like I mentioned, de you know, depends on rain. And where we, how can we tackle food insecurity? How can we tackle poverty? How can we uh, have poverty to a reasonable, to a reasonable extent? Is by making sure that there is food, you know, in season and out of season, like now in dry season for the Ecowas region. We need to provide irrigation. Also, another point is improving market access. We need to improve market access, regulations and government and governance. It's very important. Also, use of fertilizers. We need to encourage more of natural fertilizers, organic fertilizers, because of what the chemicals have also done to our soils and disrupt our soils. Now, I'll be very fast because of time. Now, yeah. The next one is making better use of information technology. It's very important. IT, we are in that era, actually. 
and we have seen that if, for example, if we come into the rural environment and build a hub, why can't we build a hub, an IT hub in the rural environment? You will see it will start attracting investors. People will start living those cities that are overpopulated and, you know, where there is high crime rates and coming back to warm up the rural areas. Very good. And I it now also adopting, sometimes we need to also think about the GMO crops. Where I am now, their country, they are, um, um, they are investing in GMO. GMO is not totally bad. Some persons think that organic um, crops or organically produced livestock products or crop products, that they are healthy. Um, it doesn't mean they are healthy, but it just tells us the way it is cultivated. Now, if they have a medical um, 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 advice for them not to eat products from the organics or not to eat products from the GMOs, then they can either go the other way, depending on. So GMO crops does not mean that it's unhealthy because the adoption of GM crops in Africa has remained limited. Of course, resistance from overseas, uh, uh, you know, abroad customers, particularly in Europe, has been a hindrance. But with Africa's rapid population growth, high yield GM crops um, that are resistant, um, you know, to weather shocks, will provide an opportunity for Africa to address food insecurity. And then, uh, last but not the least, reforming the land ownership issue, which we had talked about, the land ownership. Because a lot of farmers uh, need, um, they, you know, they don't have lands. They, they don't have the right to land, farmland. So, and of course, it will enhance productivity and inclusiveness yeah. in mind. And then, lastly, I mentioned it before, value Very chain. Good. Very good. Thank value you so chain. much. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. As you can tell, uh, this uh, professor is uh, so passionate. We can have him here for hours. He will be talking uh, about serious things that we need to do. He's asking questions and he's providing uh, answers to the questions and he's making suggestions. There's so much we can discuss on the agriculture and development in Africa. Thank you for uh, coming to share this. Uh, I think uh, we will. I hope we'll have you back. You have time to come and share more with us because there are so many things we uh, didn't actually dig into. So thank you, thank you for coming. And we strongly believe Africa's renaissance is now. Temple Africa TV believes so. We all believe so. And the best is yet to come. The sun shall rise again. And Dr. Aguba, my heartfelt appreciation goes to you for coming to our show. Thank you very much for having me, Professor Balubi. And we also give a big shout out to our own producer, Malik Sal, who's always working incredibly hard to make sure that every program, every show that, run, that we run can go smoothly from start to finish. Thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen, and may God bless you all.